I remember when he died, I was a little boy, and I went to the wake with my aunt, and I was kneeling out of the casket, and I was looking at him inside the casket, and I started thinking about my flashlight. I started thinking about the batteries inside my flashlight. And then I said to my aunt, maybe he's not dead, maybe he's just in the wrong way. This morning, Stephen Wright, Rolling Stone ranked him the 15th greatest comedian of all time. His extra dry, deadpan style has made him can't miss stand up since the 1970s. Over the decades, Wright has written tens of thousands of jokes, but now he's out with his first novel called Harold, published by Simon & Schuster, a part of Paramount Global. Like everything else Wright does, it is wholly unique. I get outside and get in my car and I'm driving out to the store. My mind is skipping around and wondering how my life would have been different had I been born one day earlier. Then I'm thinking maybe it wouldn't have been different other than I would have asked that question yesterday. <laughs> I think abstract. I'm into surrealism and abstract stuff. And then it, like, it combined into this style. But I didn't sit down. I didn't have meetings with myself. How can I make a certain style? This is how I speak, and that's how I think. And it's, another, and it's just meshed together by accident. True to form, Stephen Wright's first book began as something else, a series of tweets. I didn't want to put jokes on Twitter because I just thought, to me, a joke is an alive thing to be said to an audience. So then I thought, I'm just going to keep writing it as a book, not write it on Twitter. I went to a museum where they had all the heads and arms from the statues that are in all the other museums. Wright, who grew up in Massachusetts, honed his unmistakable style on the comedy circuit in the late 1970s. First appearance on national television, and uh, I think you're going to find him a little different. His career took off when Johnny Carson booked him on The Tonight Show in 1982. I got up the other day and everything in my apartment had been stolen and replaced with an exact replica. <laughs> I remember when I was in the womb. I was over on the right. Okay, we'll carry on with this next week. Over time, his stand-up shows were supplemented with an Oscar. This was the short film category and we're really glad that we cut out the other 60 minutes. Jeez, is this dangerous? Nope. Well, you know, there's a chance in everything. And dozens of movie appearances. Most famously, the voice of radio DJ K. Billy in Reservoir Dogs. Joe Egan and Jerry Rafferty were a duo known as Steeler's Wheel when they recorded this Dylan-esque pop bubble gum favorite from April of 1974. But none of it happened before Wright was able to conquer one all-consuming fear. How long did it take you to get over stage fright? Uh, slowly after like several years, three or four years, where I got to be like not, it wasn't as, as intense, but it's not normal. It's not, it's not the same as me and you just sitting here talking. So I'm relaxed to a point that it's not going to get more relaxed. It's like I'm used to doing something that's not normal to do. I'm used to the, this is crazy. Part of Wright's new normal became working on Harold. How is the process of writing a book for you different than the process of writing jokes? The jokes come into my mind just from doing my daily hanging out or whatever I'm doing. I notice things that come out as jokes. Oh, that could be like that. Like I just, from really noticing the world. But the book was purposely working on it for a couple of hours, focused on this exact subject. So that was different for me. I liked doing it because it was stuff I would have never thought of if I wasn't sitting down focused. Harold is a seven-year-old boy growing up in the 1960s. The book is a wandering journal into his non-stop mind. What Wright describes as birds constantly flying into his brain. I put a funnel on his head and I was pouring into his head everything I think about life that couldn't be said as jokes on stage. So I'm using him to 
say what I think of this whole experience. Is Harold you? Part of it is, yeah. Do you think you have more birds than most people? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, I I'm so. not bragging, but yes. No, I think so. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way. It's not. You do? Yeah. And I guess you just have to figure out how to harness it. Yes, yeah, because you, you, you can only you know, only have so much control of what you're thinking about, but then you do have control on what you do with what you're thinking about, or you organize it or focus, you know? Everyone is just wandering around like an insane asylum walking down the street with just thoughts. Anxiety and restlessness are still things that are unavoidable for Wright, especially on stage. I broke a mirror in my house. I'm supposed to get seven years bad luck, but my lawyer thinks he can get me five. <laughs> it's exaggerated. Everything good is amazing. Everything bad is horrible. You know, it has its highs and lows. When you say some joke you think is hilarious, and there's 800 people just staring blankly at you. <laughs> no. You have, you have to uh, <laughs> act like, oh, you're not phased. I'm not phased by that, but the inside of your head, you're going, oh, my God. <laughs> and I can't predict what they're going to laugh at, even after all these years. You think that maybe, maybe I am crazy. On a scale of one to ten, six being the highest. In Herald, Wright asks if it's possible to be in your 70s and have the perspective of a child without being nuts. You're almost in your 70s. What do you think? I think it's, well, I don't think I'm nuts, but I think that you can still have the wonderment of a child. Like, why is this, uh, everything in, it didn't wear off for me. We met Stephen Wright uh, at the Strand in New York oh, City nice. on, on yeah. Independent Bookstore Day, which Aww. was fitting. He's actually going to be at the Strand th coming up this Thursday if you want to meet him. Um, but this book is different. Let yeah. me just say that. Just As is he. Yes. A as is he, Fits. just so you know, going in. But it, I just thought it was interesting where he said all the stuff he couldn't say on stage, he wanted to say somewhere, so he said it here. 